Welcome back to Professor DC where I take complex stories and turn them into simple and engaging explanations. Today I will be discussing Indigo, a powerful story by Satyajit Ray that exposes the exploitation faced by Indian farmers during the British rule. The story shakes us to the core with the way it portrays the suffering of farmers. First, let's understand a bit of history. Back then, India was under British rule. The British forced Indian farmers to cultivate indigo, a plant used to make blue dye. But this farming was extremely painful for farmers. They weren't allowed to grow their own crops on their land. They were forced to grow indigo. And in return, they received very little money. The indigo cultivation ruined the land and the farmers were trapped under heavy debts. They felt helpless and powerless. Now imagine if you were one of those farmers and all your hard work didn't benefit you but instead destroyed your land. How would you feel? This is the pain and struggle that lies at the heart of the story. Now let's move on to our main character, Anirudh Bose. Anirudh Bose is 29 year old young man working in an advertising agency in Calcutta. His life looks perfectly normal and successful. He has a good job, earns well, but still his mind is stuck somewhere else. His thoughts are tangled with hardships of indigo farmers. You might be wondering in today's modern world where he has everything, why is he so concerned about something that happened long ago? The truth is for him, it's not just history. It's a personal story tied to his heart. He feels the pain of those farmers whom he had seen with his own eyes as a child. And this is where the story begins. When Aniruddha remembers his past, he was born in Mongir, Bihar. And Mongir was a place where British had forcefully imposed indigo cultivation on the farmers. This memory is deeply ingrained in his mind because he himself had witnessed all of this. When Aniruddha was a 16 year old, his father passed away and he moved to Calcutta with his mother. But the memories of Mongir and the farmer's struggles followed him. Now think about it. If you grew up in a place where people around you were suffering every day, could you forget that pain? Probably not. That's exactly what happened with Anirudh. Now here the story becomes even more interesting. The British had promised the farmers that growing indigo would bring them good money. But it was a lie. The farmers were trapped in debts they could never repay. The indigo cultivation ruined the land and British never cared about the farmers' pain. Exploitation means taking advantage of someone unfairly and that's exactly what the British were doing. They exploited the farmers, stripping them of their land their hard work and their dignity. They only saw farmers as a means to profit. Now imagine if you were one of those farmers, how would you feel? Wouldn't you feel angry? You would feel that you were being treated unfairly, right? This is exactly what happened to Aniruddha. When he was a child, he visited an indigo plantation with his father. There, he saw the farmers working under scorching sun, hungry and thirsty. Their eyes were filled with despair. Anirudh saw all of this with his own eyes and even at that young age he felt that something was terribly wrong. He saw how the British planter coldly ignored the farmers pain. That British planter dismissed their suffering as if it didn't matter at all. Have you ever seen someone behave in a way where they completely ignore someone's sufferings? This is what disturbed Anirudh. That moment left a deep mark on his heart and mind and he could never forget that day. As Anirudh grew older, he began to understand that what he had seen wasn't just hard labor. It was a form of exploitation that was breaking people's spirit. The British not only forced the farmers to grow indigo, but they also ruined their land. Once indigo was cultivated, 
the land became barren and the farmers couldn't grow food for their families. Reflecting on all this, Anirudh realized that this history was connected to his own life. He had seen the suffering of those farmers with his own eyes and now he wanted to tell the story to the world. Think about it. When you witness something with your own eyes that deeply touches you, can you ever forget it? This is exactly what happened to Anirudh. But the story doesn't end here. Anirudh also realized that farmers weren't just victims. They were fighters. They were the ones who refused to grow indigo any longer and rebelled against the British. The farmers who had been oppressed for so many years one day decided to stand up and fight back against the British. In the beginning, the British tried to suppress them. They sent soldiers to scare and crush the farmers. But the farmers were not ready to give up. They used whatever they had as weapons, sticks, stones and even their bare hands. And slowly they began to win. Now think about this. These farmers who had nothing, where did they find the strength to fight? It was their courage, their belief that they had to fight for their rights. Now, I ask you, if you were in the place of those farmers, would you also have had the courage to stand up against such powerful enemy? What do you think gave those farmers so much strength? This story teaches us no matter how bad the circumstances are, there is always a way to fight, to reclaim your dignity. The farmers stood up for their rights and that's the greatest victory of this story. Anirudh finds hope in the story. He realizes that although his writing may not change the world, he can at least honor the memory of those farmers. He can tell their story and in doing so, he can give them the respect they deserve. So, Anirudh sits down to write. He writes about the pain and suffering of the farmers, their struggles and the rebellion that restored their dignity. He knows that his words can never fully capture the extent of their suffering, but he feels that he has done his part honoring their memory. What does this story teach us? That no matter how difficult the situation is, the power to fight is always within us. Those farmers proved that when a person stands up for their dignity and rights, they can face even the greatest powers. So, my dear students, what did we learn from the story today? We learned that history isn't just a series of dates and events, but it's the stories of people who have taught us through their struggles that the power of humanity is the greatest strength. Anirudh took it up upon himself to tell the story of those farmers and in doing so, he made their struggles immortal. Now, my dear friends, I ask you, is there a story in your family, in your community or your country that the world needs to hear? What are the stories that inspire you and help you learn from the past? I would love to read them either in the comment section or in my email. My email ID, as you already know, is iwritermailid at gmail.com. That is I-W-R-I-T-E-R-M-A-I-L-I-D at gmail.com. And I would definitely read and give a feedback or react. So that brings us to the end of today's discussion. I hope you found the story as powerful and inspiring as I did. If you enjoyed this explanation, don't forget to like, share and subscribe to my channel that is Professor DC. Your support helps me bring you more content like this. And as always, leave a comment to let me know which story or chapter you'd like to hear about next. Until next time, keep exploring the power of stories. Signing off, this is Professor DC. Goodbye and you take care of yourself.